Well, this is, okay, this is for sure Zoria. She's always quick to hit the lights. Who was there? Hmm, I wonder if she did it to turn off sus. Is she gonna kill me? Yeah, I fucking knew it. She always kills me first! And she self-reported, I can't! Where was that? Okay, that's what's gonna happen. Zoria? How are you this round? Are you evil or are you not evil? Light's already- I fucking knew it! She always kills me first! I should have this right. Give the murder some more. Long, brave, sad. Murderer. Don't- don't trust- don't trust her. She- I fucking knew it! She always kills me first! Surprise, surprise, we're jumping on the Among Us train. But before we really get into the nitty gritty of the analysis, we've got here, what is Among Us? So Among Us is a social deception game similar to board games like One Night Ultimate Werewolf or uh, The Resistance. So what makes Among Us special is the requirement for the crewmates to perform manual tasks while avoiding death by knife, gun, um, or tongue. <laughs> <laughs> so while in Werewolf and Resistance, players have the option to lie about the rules in order to gain an upper hand, uh, which is not really great friend behavior, um, Among Us is strictly defined rule set by its medium. That being said, we've played too many games um, where ghosts aren't aware they can complete tasks, so those, those like physical rules definitely aren't a perfect way to keep that from happening. And none of that speaks to the number of times that Zodia has desperately tried to be a big brain detective to the point of becoming the third imposter. Basically, uh, she's a bad <laughs> she's a bad enough crewmate that is essentially helping the imposters all the time. Um, this is, of course, assuming that there's enough people to allow for a second imposter. Among Us uh, thrives about a group of seven or more players, and um, usually we get about four or five people to play. So the pa and that makes the pace of the game a lot less enjoyable. It's a lot easier for the imposters to win as opposed to when you have a group of like eight or ten, right? Are you ever gonna let my smooth brain detective plays go? No. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to live with those forever. All of those times where I've been so convinced that somebody's the imposter only to get stabbed in the back by somebody else. <laughs> you, you try hard. So, I mean, you, you do know the map well. Knowing the map well and being a tryhard is what gets me in trouble. But anyways, <laughs> everything we've been des describing here focuses on the main release of the game, and our analysis will be focusing on that as well. Well, there are a lot of amazing mods and alternative game modes out there, like Proximity Chat, Sheriff or Detective mods, and Zombie or even Werewolf mods. They're fan-created and don't represent the main narrative created by the developers, or by Inner Sloth. Rather, the mods don't necessarily fit into the myth of what Inner Sloth are trying to create. In Northrop Fry's Anatomy of Criticism, myth is the tendency to tell a story which is in origin a story about characters who can do anything, and only gradually become attracted toward a tendency to tell a plausible or credible story. Essentially, the developers created a world and characters, and only through repetition and play surrounding those characters has the myth of the Among Us world come to be. Players and modders alike seek to develop their own stories of what's going on in the game world, but ultimately they aim to keep themselves true to the source material, the myth that Inner Sloth created. So what are the main characters? Essentially the crewmates, right? So um, we have these basic avatars, kind of these jellies, um, more or less symbolizing um, people in space suits, right? However, there is a certain stylization. Um, preferred colors or accessories um, that we can use to kind of self-impose an image of ourselves onto the avatar. So for instance, I tend to play as red. It's my favorite color other than black, but black is technically a shade, but considering I'm a, like a shade wraith, it's not that far from accurate. And having like the little monster trash uh, bag over my head because I am trash. <laughs> I casually just float around alternating between white and yellow, usually with something like a halo, though sometimes I go a little bit out there and put on some sort of plague doctor mask. Oh, you fucking angel. <laughs> 
But anyways, and I mean, even with like the main characters, like, so these are our stylizations, right? Um, but group dynamic comes into play too, right? In terms of how the characters as crewmates in a group function. I mean, like, Zoria and I and our favorite reoccurring farmer, Sad Jack, all have uh, specific play styles as both crewmate and imposter. Um, so I mean, Zoria is one of the best imposters, like flat out, which is why she's so great at remaining an imposter as a crewmate. Um, but seriously, like your knowledge of the map is uncanny and being able to call people on their bullshit being like, wait, are you sure you were there? Because like, that doesn't make sense based off this. Um, I'm just chaos when I play. <laughs> See, I always thought you were, like, the anti-chaos, considering the fact that anytime I'm crewmate, I pretty much go clockwise. Like, it doesn't really matter what my tasks are, it's just easier for me to go in kind of one steady direction. Right. And you almost go the same direction as me every time, though admittedly that has gotten me killed in airlocks <laughs> and decontamination more times than I'd care to admit. <laughs> this is another thing, we usually kill each other, right? What's the point if we don't do that? <laughs> And I mean, I, I'm bad at, I mean, sometimes it works really well in my favor is spinning the narrative. Like, like I've had some pretty stellar moments of being able to spin the narrative, like the, the fatal um, electrical situation that one time. That one time. Yeah, where <laughs> I, I, I stack killed for only like two people, but was able to convince everyone that more than one person was in that room, like at least five of us. And I was just like, who was in the stack? And you were all so confused, being like, oh my god, were we in the stack or were we not? Were we close to the stack? Like, Yeah, it, it's always a fun game when people start questioning themselves and questioning each other. That whole dynamic of, if you start doing the same thing every time, like, you claiming that I kill you first every time to the point where the entire group <laughs> decides, oh, Zoria had to be the imposter because Mora's dead. And Although to be I, fair, I, the one time that happened where I literally was killed by you first and then everyone was like, oh, it's Mora's dead, it was Zoria, you were the imposter. And even though you had the cleanest kills, it was just by association. People were like, yo, this is your pattern. Time to kill you off. Like, <laughs> and ultimately, like, just thinking about that interaction, the ways that we all kind of form our own inclinations and our own group dynamics, it kind of leads us to the idea of parasocial relationships and how fans are associating specific YouTubers with the game, even going so far as to write fanfiction about players as characters. Not to mention the fact that the Among Us official Twitter are slowly sculpting our own understanding of the game. All of this kind of comes from Tween's wishful identification and parasocial relationships with YouTubers by Amanda N. Tol Tolbert and Kristen L. Drogos. Which is honestly a shady title. Like, I feel insulted and I'm not even a teenager anymore. <laughs> not even a teenager, let alone a tween. But parasocial interaction involves the emotions, thoughts, and actions that a viewer experiences during media exposure that are geared toward a specific performer or character which they draw on from Cohen. When experienced repeatedly over time, these interactions can develop into a PSR or parasocial relationship, which is a one-sided symbolic relationship between the viewer and a media character. In their foundational conceptualization of PSRs, Horton and Wall describe this relationship with the characters as a sense of intimacy at a distance experienced by the viewer. And before anybody goes away panicking, PSRs are a normal occurrence in traditional media environments and are experienced by both adults and children. Totally. And something else to expand upon this is uh, our modern understanding of parasocial relationships are mostly um, looked at in celebrity culture, um, and which is slowly merging into influencer culture. But parasocial relationships can happen like with a child and their teacher, looking at comic book characters, right? Or, you know, just even people in your life that you idolize, like some kind of um, like the top scholar in your field or someone, right? Like these are all parasocial relationships. And the reason why we bring this up is because we identify specifically with YouTubers and Twitch streamers who are really, really like cranking out the Among Us con uh, content right now. Um, because maybe we want to emulate their play style or, or we take the, their relationships as part of the game to help inform our understanding of the game lore. For instance, since all these YouTubers and Twitch streamers are, um, 
well, human. <laughs> a lot of our theories out there about the Among Us lore are human-based, right? Are these shape-shifting aliens um, infected? Are the imposters infected humans or aliens that are humanoid in nature, as opposed to being like, what's under the spacesuit? Who knows, right? Like, it, 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 there is some kind of human element and, or, you know, understanding certain kill styles, right? Or certain lie tactics that can be transposed onto our understanding of the lore. Um, and YouTubers do in fact exist in the real world, um, but something to for YouTubers and fans to realize is what, what you're drawing to is not necessarily the person, but their internet persona, right? Like everyone is different online or, or the way they play, right? It's like when I play crewmate, like I see even we mentioned it earlier, I perceive my play style to be extremely chaotic while Zoria perceives my play, play style to be extremely methodological, right? Like, I mean, and to be fair, as crewmate, I check vitals constantly, I'm checking in men, like, I know who is in and out and where, right? So, that's almost kind of a quasi-parasocial relationship, is this persona of my play style, right? Um, so, of course, uh, we won't get into the politics of parasocial relationship in YouTubers, um, but essentially, it's we're talking about how we transpose images from the real world onto our understanding of characters and build meaning from that. And that's where we really get into that idea you mentioned of lore building. So when we are lore building, we're drawing on the game's original influence as well as that of content creators that we gain through those parasocial relationships. All of this leads to the questions of who or what are the imposters? As a starting point, there are multiple death scenes, some with a gun, some with stabbing, some with a tentacle monster or alien situation, and new screenshots from the Among Us Twitter are showing death by laser firing. And I mean, um, we've tested this, and these death screens are completely random. So, are we assuming the crew is overrun by sinister extraterrestrials? And why are we even assuming we're all human under our suits? Who knows, maybe they're just space jellies space gummy bears i'm fucking space jellies fuck that shit <laughs> regardless <laughs> the player's participation poses a potential threat to the narrative the tension between performance or gameplay and exposition being the story breaks down when we consider the idea of players using the avatars to role play particularly in mods like proximity chat so when lore building, we can't just look at the characters, which carry the narrative in most media, particularly given the lack of characterization in Among Us. Instead, we also have to look at the setting. And here we take a quick pause to share the case study on the Skeld. Let's explore. Cool. Find all of the secret hidden places. You've done a little bit of preparation. I have done less than nothing. We thrive on the and... We're gonna see if we can find these dead bodies and other things in the spaceship. With our, and we're gonna uh, start off with the skeleton. With our alternatives, love you and hate you. Guess who belongs to who? <laughs> LOL, JK, it's actually the opposite. <laughs> cool, let's start. Um, see, now if we stand properly this way, it's usually how it actually ends up. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Okay, the game literally just gave me a notice that it's like, even though we allow for four players, um, truly, you should have at least five, which is interesting from like a game mm. mechanic perspective. Um, but otherwise, alt, alt you, you stay here, man the button, and we're going to explore. Um, love you I appreciate is one of the, the killers, salt and pepper shaker. Way. Love you is the imposter. Awesome. Um, but otherwise, so we are on, what's this one? The Skeld, right? Which is like the ship. Yes. So in terms of tasks, I mean, this one is the asteroid hitter. Um, asteroid tasks. This one, I guess, I mean, this is the, tr we have the trash chute up here, correct? Where I'm standing right here. Yeah. yeah. This one's the leaf one. Sorry. The one I'm standing at. Um, Gotta clear those leaves, and then we've got our famous wires. Yes, and then, but this is the oxygen tank, is it not? That it's like if uh, we were to, like, if the impossible yeah. sabotages it. Okay. Because it's interesting now that I noticed there's an actual plant inside. For O2? Yeah. Yeah, we gotta save the plants so we can breathe. Huh, interesting. I'm also looking at, like, there's like, are these glass. There's a glass floor with, I'm assuming, flora underneath? 
Yeah, so this, since this room is O2, we've got the fans circulating with a lot of plant matter with assuming some sort of vents on top of it. Yes, which which brings in t- to the question that everyone's been asking the Among Us Twitter devs is like, are we naked or is this like, it looks like spacesuits, but clearly the little backpack is not an oxygen tank. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting considering there's O2 and yet we're implied to be in spacesuits kind of by the totally. visual appeal of the game. Totally. Uh, one We've of the got cameras. Wonderful camera. Yes, and then navigation. So this is the head of the ship. Okay. So basically, we're just noticing things. Like we're we're treating the game like an object text. So we're just like, I mean, so for humanities people, an object text, or for rather for non-humanities people, object text is basically when you t- take a work of literature and you rip the. F- fuck out of it like everything has meaning anything can have meaning if you want it to and we're basically doing this with the game right now we're trying to notice things or what contributes to a narrative essentially yeah yeah there's not a lot in shields as far as things are concerned wires but i assume are some sort of energy cathodes to power things download communications on download too, it's interesting that like the f- folder is communi- comms, I'm assuming communication, and it's downloading to my tablet. Um, hmm. So that's a little bit of like the world elements. Seems to, there's no, we don't know the mission technically other than find the imposter, but like the ship, we have an O2 section, we have a navigation section, a weapon section. Um, it's also interesting to consider the fact that this is like hard form tapes seemingly recording yeah when we have all of these computers though admittedly this looks like an old crt it does it totally does where we've got our nice lcd displays or led displays in this old crt with a nice astro gaming headset beside it not actually sponsored by astro unless you want to astro astro please please sponsor us (laughs) yeah so there's a weird mix of modern and old technology we do and i mean this is the task um this one here where you like switch on the node or whatever i forget what it does um diverting power or something come protect me i I have a i have to finish download here so from my tablet to headquarters okay so headquarters is headquarters the ship or is headquarters like earth or ergo our other planet or wherever we're from i'm going to guess the planet we're from card swipe and then we actually have we do actually do have a map we do on oh. the admin table in a uh, card swipe uh the wallet has a photo um but it's just among us players are in the photo so they're not divulging the um uh, the uh, I, is ethnicity the right word? Race or the being that we are, rather? Yeah, it's also fun to realize that out of those three faces, mm-hmm. none of them are the four colors that we chose. Facts, facts. It must be pre- so cho- just pre-chosen s- by the devs. I'm assuming. Just a set image. And admin. Also, fun fact, it looks like there is a Among Us body here walking with the brain sticking out. It does. The imposters are already on us. They we? are. Okay, let's go this this way, maybe. Casual mop. Um, Janitorial staff seems uh, to be missing. Floating crate that is apparently anti-gravity, even though we're not anti-gravity. Yeah, I saw that on the way through before. I was like, hmm... Uh, trash dump here. I'm just looking at all of the stuff in the lower right hand corner for communications, the various satellite dishes and relays and everything. Mm, totally. So I mean, is this a mission? Like, are, or are we just, is it an observation unit, right? Wires, fucking mm-hmm. wires where everyone comes to die. I- Very kind of hack job wire system with wires just on the floor. Well, also, oh my god, can you hear in the background? No. Oh. The kitty is quiet. The kitty is scratching everything, and if he bites through my Wi-Fi like antenna again, I'm gonna make freaking lose it. Like. It's 
So yeah, every one of these tasks... Oh, now my download's here. So yeah, it's from location to tablet, and then tablet to headquarters. Mm -hmm. I definitely went through the last task a little too fast, but it was basically just ramp something up. Oh, you're fine. I did three tasks in here. Um, but that makes me wonder about what we are, because everyone assumes, I mean, from what I've seen fandom-wise, it's like the imposter is, mostly everyone's kind of going with the alien trope, since there are so many alien death screens, but one of them is like, um, a knife, or like, uh, getting shot, right? So it's, mm -hmm. are we a mixed crew? Like, are we Star Wars, where the race doesn't matter, we're just like pals from a specific planet doing specific things, or... Right? Like, is it, it isn't necessarily an alien invasion to humans, right? I appreciate that your go-to is Star Wars. My brain immediately goes to Mass Effect and Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Trekkie versus Star Wars, a war older than time. <laughs> These wonderful engines with open coils sparking and steam puffing out. That's definitely not hot enough to burn me in my whatever oh, suit no, body no, I have. Absolutely not. And the fact that the oil, like, where you fuel up, is just this massive hole. Mm -hmm. um, Casual torture chains hanging over here. <laughs> Security. Security. Um, little VHS tapes. On the VHS tapes, files. Yeah. Little jar of pens. Um, yeah, this is just a little toggle power. Yes, nothing happening here. Some blinky lights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing happening here. This is the reactor. Yeah. Which is interesting that we have both a reactor and engines rather than the one or reactor the other powering side. the engines. Like it makes sense, but to have the engines steaming and arcing that way seems a little excessive. Though there is power line down here that seemingly runs over to the engine. Yeah, to one of the thrusters, and it's like, you. but you can see the engine is connected also to the fuel thing, so I, I don't understand how their technology works, but it's it's just, you know, and, and same thing over here. Oh, that's what it's called. Engine accept diverted power. That's one of the tasks. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm assuming and that's from the reactor? Probably. The mine, I think, was in electrical. Right. Um, and then there's a line engines here, which is interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Into the famed med bay. Where everyone has to scan. And it's interesting that they have a scan just for, like, vitals, and then just beds. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's yeah, it's a pretty, pretty low-budget med bay when you can only afford one blanket for four beds. <laughs> But yeah, anything here? Not particularly interesting. The Skeldas are pretty limited. They have pizza, apparently. Yeah, pizza that's like greasy, fallen over. Some calf trays with no clear place to receive food. <laughs> yeah, there's no cafeteria, but there's calf trays. Um... Also interesting, if you look at the actual dead body, I, like, I know it's just for- this is just- I don't know if this is so much a world-building thing. But, like, it's literally just, it l reminds me of, like, a Christmas ham, you know what I mean? It's just, like, the meat and the bone sticking out. <laughs> so it is confirmed we are all just a bunch of Christmas hams running around the Skeld. As we should. Oh! <laughs> you reported it! <laughs> just in case there was anything interesting that happened here. Figure we might as well, uh, do a quick investigation and <laughs> skip the vote. Hmm, I wonder who it could be. Love you, what say you? I say skip. Yeah, fuck yourself. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. Okay. So yeah, that's... That's the Skeld. That's the Skeld. So what are some conclusions we can draw from Skeld? Other than, I don't, like, I mean, we can do conclusions at the end, but that one's obviously, like, mid-orbit vibes, right? Yeah, that's clearly en route to somewhere. It's kind of an interesting mix of 
some signs of life, like pizza and cafeteria trays, mm -hmm. with a sort of potentially emergency situation, like the wires being pulled out everywhere. Right. That might imply that there is some sort of emergency, like aliens, or an uprising, or a coup going on on board the ship. Totally. Also, um, this is super interesting. Uh, Zarya, go to host, create game, and we have three images. There's a different image for the Skelt, a different image for Mira HQ, and a different image for Polis. Uh -huh. So see the Skeld? It's just like, you can see the number of imposters you cho or players you choose, right? Um, yeah. But otherwise, it's just like a window with bodies floating outside. But Mira looks different, right? You literally have an imposter, a more alien-like imposter in the background. Trying to tongue Pink's cheeks. Yeah, yeah it's committing sexual assault. Um, and uh, yellow clearly being the other imposter for viewing it and not saying anything while red waves, right? Mm -hmm. And then Polis is just the lab work. Interestingly, the lens flare on... Or lens flare, the glass alteration on pink makes it look like pink is sad but that's yeah, clearly just I was about to say the same thing sad pink is sad so in our chaotic case study playthrough we did a rhetorical analysis so specifically a visually rhetorical one so what does that mean and why does it matter visual rhetoric is essentially effective communication through images the most popular examples being the study of propaganda posters um and basically what visual rhetoric does is it's how do we subconsciously soak in the information around us? Um... This ultimately helps us with the overall immersion in the game. Whether that's the crystal being put back together on Polis and then stored in Mira HQ, or the dropships of Polis and Mira being the same, or even the crewmate's Ninja Turtle-like urge to consume pizza. It isn't just the visuals around us, but the ways we interact with them. All of the tasks are learned about by doing. There are no instructions beforehand, meaning that a lot of the information the game gives us is disjointed. It's up to us to create those links and connections. In games, these rhetorically salient visuals are portrayed through environmental storytelling. In game design as narrative architecture, Henry Jenkins identifies the environmental clues as spatial storytelling, stating that in many cases, the characters, our guides through these richly developed worlds, are stripped down to the bare bones. Description displaces exposition, and plot plots fragment into a series of episodes and encounters. When game designers draw story elements from existing film or literary genres, they are most apt to tap those genres – fantasy, adventure, science fiction, horror, war – which are most invested in world making and spatial storytelling. So, spatial stories evoke pre-existing narrative associations. Um, they can provide a staging ground where narrative events are enacted. They may be embedded narrative information within their mise en sens, or they provide resources for emergent narratives. Um, so Among Us draws upon pre-existing narratives and structures of social deception games, alien invasion movies, etc. Um, and we can see uh, this with, say, the Jester or the Sheriff mod. Um, but we also see this with the strong bond of a parasocial relationship. So as we play, we want to be the galaxy brain, like these big YouTubers, and take those pre-existing narratives and transplant them onto our own game, game play and game styles. And in terms of, you know, narrative building, it's kind of like the imposters to ultimately win would have to be big brained and they would have to have a, some kind of plan in place to take all the crewmates down effectively. So, um, in continuing with Jenkins' article, he cites Kostikian, who writes, for example, that A story is a controlled experience. The author consciously crafts it, choosing certain events precisely, in a certain order, to create a story with maximum impact. Adams claims, A good story hangs together, the way a good jigsaw puzzle hangs together. So, spatial stories, on the other hand, are often dismissed as episodic, that is, each episode, or set piece, can become compelling and often the episodes could have been reordered without significantly impacting our experience as a whole. Um, and to add on to that, spatial stories are not badly constructed stories, um, which is to say spatial stories as our understanding and our putting together the stories, but rather, they are stories which respond to alternative aesthetic principles, privileging spatial expo exploration over plot development. Spatial stories are held together by broadly defined goals and conflicts. 
and pushed forward by characters' movement across the map. The resolution often hinges on the players reaching their final destination, though, as Mary Fuller notes, not all travel narratives end successfully or resolve the narrative enigmas which set them in motion. And yet, these two ideas complement each other in Among Us. Something else worth noting is that Jenkins also talks about enacting storytelling, which is what Samara has been talking about in terms of narratives and playstyles or specific avatars and personas we embody while playing. However, at the core of it, what we're talking about is clues that give us an overall understanding of the game world. So, the game world becomes a kind of information space or memory palace, as Jenkins describes it. And as we enter these spaces, we may become overwhelmed with powerful feelings of loss or nostalgia, especially in those instances where the space has been transformed by narrative events. Um, so essentially, we're world building. Like, beyond the characters, we're looking for information in the game space and looking for these feelings of nostalgia to feel a connection, and it's, it's how we're getting immersed and wanting to interact with the world beyond killing our friends for sport. Ultimately, that nostalgia really is how world building becomes building with a set of Lego pieces that Inner Sloth has given us. So some of the things we've noted in the case studies are the broken glass, the old food lying around, the crystals being found in Polis and reconstructed, as well as being stored in Mira. And why does Polis have holes while well, Mira and the Skeld rely on vents for the imposters to travel around? And so what we're kind of leading into now um, is we've got all these environmental storytelling elements that we're picking up, right? And how we make sense of them is through forensic fandom or intertextuality. So we've already, you can actually witness some intertextuality happening um, both in the games and uh, via Twitter, right? Like, so for example, with all the new um, info or little pieces that the Among Us Twitter is releasing, people have made the cor connection of the Henry Stickman lore, um, which is another game that uh, Inner Sloth has designed. Um, so you can see by this one tweet, imagine if Among Us actually gave us Henry Stickman lore, I think I'd be the funniest thing ever. And then Among Us liked it, because there already are instances of Henry Stickman lore within the existing maps. And Inner Sloth have actually confirmed the influence of the Henry Stickman collection, and especially considering their upcoming airship map in a recent devlog. So, in her article, Adaptation, Intertextuality, and the Endless Deferral of Meaning, Ilana Shiloh explains that any text is an amalgam of others that forms a larger fabric of cultural discourse that, as elaborated by Robert Stamm, is meant to become an ever-shifting grid of interpretation. Um, so another way to understand intertextuality, um, as uh, Milena Popova dis explains in Dogfuck Rape World Omegaverse... <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait, wait, <laughs> wait. What now? <laughs> listen, listen. The article is about basically bad anatomy wolf sex um, in fandom, but <laughs> but the article I, I, is a <laughs> There can't be a but to... Okay, clearly there's one but to that, but there can't be more than one but in all of that. We're looking at um, Popova's excellent analysis of intertextuality and not the wolf sex, okay? Um, okay, so, okay. So as I was saying, in Dogfuck dog Rape World Omegaverse, Milana Popova uses fanfiction as a critical tool in analyzing the impact of social power structures on intimate relationships and sexual consent, um, which is something huge in fan culture, via intertextuality. So fan stories are always in dialogue with the source material. So books television series or movie that they're based on um and although she talks about flash fi flash and slash uh fiction we've got the gay wolf sex and whatnot <laughs> and a kind of subversive text and taking existing narratives and putting on their meaning which she's arguing is that through this constant dialogue with the source text which many works of fan fiction it's essentially what fan fiction does it's what fandom does we're we're, we're basically compressing meaning in ways more similar to poetry or mythological cycles than modern prose. Um, so we're mythologizing the material, we're world building around it. And she also identifies what she calls intertextuality in the second degree, where fan fiction works reference not only the source material, but also other texts, including other fan works. 
Um, Kaplan showcases how such intertextuality is used by fan authors to aid in subtle and nuanced characterizations. Um, and Derrico extends the concept of intertextuality in fanfiction, arguing that fanfiction is part of what she calls archontic literature, literature deliberately making use of and building on pre-existing work. And in Among Us, the games literally present an intertextual citation of Henry Stickman. Is this an Easter egg? Something more? But how is intertextuality important for environmental storytelling? In short, it assists in the process of meaning making and connecting dots together. For Among Us, movies like Alien come to mind. However, something to keep in mind is that there is a certain uh, implicitness to environmental storytelling. So for instance, in Horizon Zero Dawn, or even Amnesia for that matter, um, the way they help create the world of the game is by this collection of notes, right? Um, but it doesn't actually, you can still learn about the world without collecting these little objects, which push our understanding of the world. Uh, of the world further. What we're doing is something a little bit deeper. We're making the meaning ourselves and essentially engaging in forensic fandom. Okay, my, my uh, hate you is loading and let me get love you in the game. Okay. Yep, love you joined. Uh, hate you failed to join the game and needs to try again. Fitting. <laughs> <laughs> Considering you hate you is my alt, yes. <laughs> cool. Cool, let's start. Okay, again, I'm getting the Among Us is playable with four players, but five or more players is recommended. Four player games will end very quickly and the imposter will often win. Okay, don't show me this. <laughs> it's like, hmm, I wonder why if you kill one person. You suddenly figure <laughs> out who the other is. Who? Shocker. Okay, so this looks like some kind of garage, right? Is it a garage or is it the back of a shuttle? If we look, it looks like there's be sets of four engines on the side. Uh, could that potentially be the Skeld? Like the ship? Maybe, but the Skeld had five engines straight out back. True, very true. Um, this one's like the fuel thing, and this one is like the- although this is the check ship status task, right? Yeah, this is the begin diagnostic. Right. Where I click, and then have to come back to things. Yeah, 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 because it takes five ever. Okay. Uh, long hallway- I hate playing in Mira, I'm so bad at it. Mira, Ooh. level one, one. One to eleven. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh my god, I can't read. Um, Once again, all of the Among Us colors in various poses. Potentially graduation photos? Like, specific crews? Hmm. Possible, though they all have the same colors in different spots, but that's not necessarily implying anything beyond those are just the colors we have. Another med base scan? I have no idea. Like, these are clearly... Okay, these are beds too, then. I was like, is this like an MRI scan machine? Like... Yeah, this is like advanced technology beds where there's like visors and stuff to scan you as you sleep because they've got them in different positions where like this one's clearly higher than this one. Totally. This one's in the middle, this one's in the bottom. Totally. And this time we have nowhere to read where this scans to. Yeah, no kidding. Mm, what's in here? Oh, an open locker. Can't see anything in it. Empty shelves. Little benches. Some little carpeting in front of things. Decontamination. De 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 mm. Long decontamination. Oh, let me. No, no. <laughs> reactor. This reactor looks totally different than the other ones. And. Yeah, and if you look like we're clearly flying somewhere. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, the clouds. Um. Because this is actually super interesting because I've noticed, or at least I've seen online, some people kind of speculating about the lore of the game have said, like, Mira is like the training center. It's like the HQ on the main homeworld. Skeld is the ship, while Polis is like the laboratory. But this is a really good observation. Like, the clouds are moving. Either the facility is in the fucking sky or it's another ship. The way I almost also, on the far left here, it looks like it is a ship from over there. Ah, uh, um, right. Yes. 
but the way I'm almost kind of wondering about it, considering like Marvel being a big name thing. Yeah. I've also been rewatching Marvel's Agents of Shield because, of course, I have been. Of course. Um, like, I, having like... Mira almost be like either the bus or the triskelion, mm-hmm. where the skeld is like a Quinjet type thing. Oh. Where you have interesting individual things on the skeld. Mind will I do my one through ten and try not to click the wrong button? <laughs> also, this lab. Do you know what's funny? Uh, despite how many times we've played this, I have never had a task in this lab. Is there even a task in this room? I'm assuming the yeah. sort sort the sort the little you know um, Play-Doh dinosaur figurines into their respective boxes, as one does with children's games, where it's like put the block in the one that is like the right shape. Yeah, there's also up here mm-hmm. one that I actually have right now, which is to reconstruct a crystal. Oh! I've never had that task before. What the fuck? I love crystals. <laughs> Put the crystal together, which seems to be floating on whatever kind of device yeah, this is. Yeah, it actually is. started floating after you completed the task. That's the first time I've actually seen evidence of a task being complete. Like, if you have crystal, hmm. the crystal actually starts floating. And that is the setting you can turn off and on, which is visual tasks. So that might not have happened if we had visual tasks off. Right, just like Medbase can. Um, yeah. Otherwise, some boxes poorly taped. Clearly, someone Our hydrants. A, a special specimens outside of where they should be. Some hastily. Not to mention. Yeah, hastily written notes. Which is what I was going to say. The hastily written notes. It almost seems like something was trying to be done in a hurry and had to be abandoned midway through right well that actually that's an interesting observation because is it it like are we in a state of emergency like everyone had to kind of stop doing their tasks or their day-to-day because imposter impasta started coming around um okay i have a task here or never mind this is the door log right this is like advanced players can actually read this and see what tasks have been completed yeah, see? Like, you should be able to see me walking. Yes, I, uh, Zoria passed the southwest sensor. Zoria passed the south. Okay, how do I exit? Yes. Um, otherwise, here we have uh, some hideous carpet. Um, <laughs> computer, notepad with pens. Obviously, the sensor, more um, astro headphones, and uh, ancient ATV equipment. ATV equipment? <laughs> You, you know what I'm trying to say. My my English brain is not working today. <laughs> what what you know what Ultra. isn't it like the ATV room? <laughs> what what am I thinking? I can't do charades with you. You can't. You know you know like in recess like the TV show where they had like the room with all the VHS tapes. AT isn't that? Yeah, it's just AV. It's audio video. It's not all train vehicle. <laughs> Do we want to go up here first? Yeah. <laughs> Ergonomic With our wonderful ball. exercise ball to sit on. Ergo ball. Someone left the juice box um, and some sticky Ooh. notes. Looks like... I can't tell what's on them. Like, potentially drawings. Like, it doesn't look like scribbles. There's, like, a circle, a little dash, right? Mm-hmm. So bored at work. With our Mountain Dew over on this desk. Yes. Um, as well as this one. Someone here has, like, this is, like, the bro that never leaves the office and has just, mo- like, tons of monsters, uh, or are those Starbucks, like, a cold brew in a can? As well as, like, a band poster of some kind by the looks of it? It's, like, I think a crystal coming out, some kind of, um, Pinocchio, uh, Frosty the Snowman situation on a diet, Frosty on Crystal. <laughs> It's also interesting that both this computer and this one have things in process. They're not shut off. They're not login screens. Although this one may be. Yeah, a and this screen. one's. This is clearly the gamer, sitting here, like editing some kind of film and gaming on the side. Or Discord up on the other screen. <laughs> With a little lamp. And then we have admin. Yeah, I have a tap oh. here. Six. One. Five. Okay. And then I have a task here. Oh, sh- shields, right? Where it's just prime the shields. Mm-hmm. And then admin is seeing the map. Yeah, 
there's not a whole lot of interest in here, especially compared to the Skeld. It's largely just the same kind of stationary, non-dynamic panels, and then the admin interactables, shields, etc. Interesting that this does remind you more of an HQ, where it's like, we have the main map of the area, you have to log in here to like clock in, but also shields is in this area. We don't actually have a navigation room, right? But it's as if shields and admin and security have been combined. It's more like a bridge than administration. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the... A glass floor <laughs> in the greenhouse. Greenhouse, where you have to, like, water the plants or whatever as one of the tasks. Mm. Have vines swinging from the roof. Totally. And I have a tube coming out of the top of whatever the heck this is. Remind me, one of the sabotages for this room is O2, correct? Yeah. One's right there, the other one is down at the bottom. Okay, so this is the main O2 thing, which is exactly the same as the Skeld. The O2 is coming from a plant. Where's the other O2? Way down at the beginning. Is there any plant life near it? I mean, there's a potted plant. Potted plant? <laughs> <laughs> I was told to do wires, so I'm doing that instead while you do the. But it's interesting because it's like similarly like the other, um, like the Skeld, the one O2 panel is with the actual plant while the other one is god knows where. It's like one is set where oxygen is kind of created on board while the other one is almost like a circulation yeah. console. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot more visible plant life here, various kinds, things like lavender, some small bushes, a few flowers, mm -hmm. this cool radiating blue flower that I want at home. <laughs> this almost looks like cotton. Yeah, yeah, that does look like cotton. To the bottom right. Yes, I have to, one of my tasks is to literally buy a beverage, which I think is hilarious because no other place has such a strange thing. This is also like a weirdly proper cafeteria color scheme and it makes me minorly uncomfortable. <laughs> it does, it reminds me of like elementary school. Also, um, the Mountain Dew is called Dundu, like D-O-N, while the um, Starbucks was called C Sir, like C dot Sir. Like a Caesar? Yes. <laughs> is this a Canadian company? <laughs> I don't know, is it? No, I don't know. But it definitely looks like Starbucks. I, I wish I didn't buy my beverage so I could look at it longer. I was ordering the beverage that looks like literally a potions bottle. Um, well, we can look at it in post. We can look at it again, maybe. Um, but yeah, uh, cafeteria with no food. We've at least got cafeteria trays and forks and stuff on this one. Yeah. These pizzas look really old. I think the one on the scale at least looked a little bit more appetizing. This literally looks moldy. There's like no color on it or anything. It looks like the pizza is a decoration on the platter. Yeah. <laughs> but still, much like actually the scale kind of, it like hastily left. But this, this mm -hmm. area shows more evidence of things being left in a hurry. Um... Storage. Storage. Isn't there an actual task in storage or not? Yeah, to grab the watering can up here. Okay. Cobwebs on boxes growing. Yeah. Shovel to bury bodies over um, here. Otherwise, books. I don't know. What do you think is the the top orange stuff? Here. It almost looks like almost a uniform, potentially. Folded and tucked away. True. I was going to say blankets, maybe? That could be. I was more wondering about this top left and the other shelf here. What the heck that thing yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. This is. The bottom one here literally just has cleaning supplies, right? And some books. Toilet paper. Yeah. So we can confirm Among Us people poop. <laughs> also, this is the weird part. There's. This is technically the balcony, which is the ugliest balcony ever. Because it doesn't look- like, if it- if the game didn't tell me this is a balcony, I would never guess this is a balcony. Which also is interesting, considering we have O2 on board, yes. and yet we can go out on a balcony. 
So is it a hostile environment, right? Like, again, are, are we a floating, like, airship kind of situation? Mm-hmm. Also, are we in suits or are we naked? Or just in clothing? Forever the question. Um, We're almost like, if O2 fails, would people out here be fine? Or is there some sort of containment field around the balcony? Right. Also, I have the weather task. So it looks like there are devices outside hooked to balloons. When I press, and as well as uh, the thing that like measures wind. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is that while the... Um, while the outside world on the ship looks gray, the one on the weather data download looks blue. Like blue skies. Hmm. Also, give me a second. My fridge is beeping. It looks like it didn't close. <laughs> oh, while well, you're doing that, I'm gonna go do some wiring. Okay, I have returned. So much like we are in a crisis situation on board Mira HQ, you almost had a crisis situation in... Fridge. <laughs> also, uh, there's the satellite out here, right? Yep. Also, where are you? I'm doing my wiring tasks. Okay. There is, in fact, a wire up by the laboratory. Okay. You know me. I'm impatient. I know you are. <laughs> Actually, just murdering everybody. Also, what's interesting is, um, so uh, now is when we fess up. Hate you is my alternative on a phone. Love you is uh, somebody else. Old, but the phone app wasn't working, so it's her alternative that I'm playing through my laptop. And so I was watching the death screen for both. The death screen that I got for killing Love You was a gun. The death screen I got um, when Hate You killed me was a knife. So both of them were human death screens. Interesting. Right? Do we want to do... Here, I, I accidentally killed the room. Do we want to go to Polis? Yeah, let's head over to Polis. Okay. Final thoughts for Mira HQ. Again, it's that sort of panic moment where there's nobody present anymore and clear signs that whatever was being done there last had to be abandoned hastily. There was indication that it was some sort of craft, whether a spacecraft or an aircraft, with the capacity to have other craft on top of them, with a weird balance of balcony and oxygen reliance. Yes. And what's interesting, and I think this is actually kind of, I don't want to say breakthrough-ish, but it's interesting because I've just seen a lot of, because the balcony, I think, is throwing people off. So at least from what I've seen online, a lot of people are assuming Mira is actually on the ground as well. Some kind of headquarters or back, like, say, on Earth, like a training facility. So how familiar are you with FNAF? Otherwise I mean, known as have... Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> I mean, I have vague memories of Nightmare Bear Fuel. Excellent. So... All jokes aside, content warning, if you're unfamiliar with the FNAF um, franchise, it deals with the death of children and it's quite dark. So we're going to put a timestamp so you can skip me talking about the general premise of this. But all right, so FNAF is an excellent example of forensic fandom, which basically means the fandom does incredible mental gymnastics to uncover the meaning of a story. Or as Chandler Harris in The Producer as Fan, Forensic Fandom and The Good Wife explains it, Forensic Fandom invites the viewers to dig deeper, probing beneath the surface to understand the complexity of a story it's telling. So while there's a main narrative of, at play, there's also a para-narrative, um, essentially a short throwaway story below the main story. So for FNAF, the main story is I'm a uh, work in the shitty little pizzeria, gotta get my paycheck, and I'm getting attacked by fucking animatronics in the middle of the night. They're crawling th through the vents. I don't understand what's happening. Well, the paranarrative is the tragic tale of children being lured, murdered um, inside the pizzeria. They're enraged spirits taking over the animatronics and seeking out revenge for you or seeking out revenge for the one who murdered them and you as the security guard have been deemed by those spirits akin to their murderer and that's why they're after you and that's literally the tldr because the amount of 
digging the fandom has done in that is insane. Um, but essentially, forensic fandom digs into these pair narratives. Um, so for FNAF, it's looking at to answer questions like, who was the murderer? What was their motive? Who are we? What, why are the animatronics coming after us? And what's the connection between the murders to the animatronics? So this comes into play through engaging in the process of evolving meaning between the text, the authors, and the reader as a sort of implied dialogue. Um, so the pesky problem here is the author. <laughs> as we've noted in the Skeld case study, analyzing text, like Homer's Odyssey, which actually has paranarrative in it, um, used to be easier since we have death of the author, which is, the Sparks notes is, the author is literally dead, we cannot consult them. But also, the text lives a life of its own, and after the author has made it, they can no longer control who makes meaning and how. So in FNAF, uh, what largely makes the creation of meaning difficult is that there's so little clues, and the author continuously meddles with the meaning of the text. Uh, AKA the eternal war between Scott Cawthon and MatPat from Game Theory and the like copious amounts of content that they've created to make that meaning. So for Among Us, the main narrative focuses on crewmates attempting to do their daily tasks and uncover and eliminate imposters. However, the para narrative is much more complex. So most games have an embedded narrative. The developers give not just a world, but a story to uncover. Through all of this case study analysis, we are very much making up our own story with the spatial or environmentally salient elements. The, amount, the elements that Inner Sloth put into the game for us to find and interact with, and interact with them around. So while it isn't an explicit narrative, that doesn't mean there isn't lore in mind. Honestly, the way the fandom's been reacting and finding all these clues is what reminds me so much of FNAF. Um, not the whole Scott Cawthon being a troll thing, like Among Us, Twitter, like we love you. <laughs> but in general, kind of feeding out these little clues. So a great example is actually um, when the Among Us devs gave the extreme polis lore, crewmate hidden in the bathroom. And spoiler alert, when, when Zodia and I were analyzing polis, uh, she was unaware of this. And I was like, hey, can you see someone hiding behind that bathroom stall? And she was like, dead ass? No. <laughs> surprise, surprise, this tiny little white sliver that looks like it could just be bathroom tile didn't stand out to me. Exactly. And I mean, even if we look at these two images of uh, the DLC skin bundles, um, if we basically analyze them right now, this is an act of forensic fandom of us trying to dig in meaning to connect it to the world at large. So looking at, for example, the Polis skin bundle, we've got the little person on the left kind of bundled up. It's not quite obvious what they're wearing. Kind of looks like me in the winter, just angry with a beanie on. The second person we have or thing is, uh, it looks kind of like a miner. We've got a hat, some overalls, a little light on top. Um, and then on the right, we have Indiana Jones and the Temple of Frozen Doom freezing his fucking ass off <laughs> and it, looking for artifacts. Meanwhile, if we look at the Mira HQ skin bundle, we see something a whole lot different, something much more suited to the environment that we'd expect them to live in. On the left, we see somebody who could be in maintenance or potentially handing out tickets, whether that's a parking situation or demerit points for taking too many sodas out of the vending machine. In the middle, we see somebody in a hazmat suit, whether they're doing stuff outside of the ship or potentially they are interacting with harsh materials that may have come from Polis, or may have been exposed to some other sort of radiation. It's unclear, but it's what we can read into. Meanwhile, on the right, we have somebody who looks more like a security guard. Security! <laughs> I just threw you off, didn't I? <laughs> no, that's the end of my thought. I didn't have a whole lot more to add beyond security guard. But I mean, so if we look at this further, right? Like looking at the Polis skin bundles, it definitely looks like research center, right? Like we got the miner doing the digging, the potentially Indiana Jones reference, like looking for stuff, right? While Mira looks a lot more organized. It looks more kind of institutional, if you will. Exactly. And even further, uh, small images of forensic fandom is for example, We've been asking this entire time, like, are we naked? Like, who are we? What do we look like? And then Among Us, 
Twitter posted, this is what peak anatomy looks like. Literally a single bone, right? Ah, uh, yes, you can see here there is the skeleton of a spaceman. Has many parts that we can analyze. Now the first one is called the bone. It's the bone. Oh, man. <laughs> or, or, you know, now, now, the, now I'm ready for your more tragic simulation of the deep lore, which someone was doing 5up fan art, who is, mind you, um, a Twitch streamer, if I'm not mistaken. So, who, this is the way they accessorize their avatar, and someone's kind of made some mini lore about, like, well, why else would a small snowman be an accessory? And judging by the fact that we have snowmen committing murder outside of Polis, Perhaps the snowmen are truly the imposters and now looking for their missing young one. <laughs> Which, of course, Among Us on their official Twitter actually interacted with. Whether they're confirming or denying these sorts of things, it still demonstrates that there is an interaction, that sort of parasocial relationship between all of them, especially in this forensic fandom space. Beautiful. Truly, truly, you are a work of art when it comes to taking my half coherent thoughts and like piecemealing it together. Um, so to further We're both go through that. Coherent. <laughs> so to go through this further, we've kind of, I mean, we do have the fandom wiki, which is not canon, mind you, it's essential. But if we're looking through just the trivia of each map, we can see already a lot of this is compiled. And although the one for the Skeld looks kind of basic, like there are visual tasks on Halloween, this is what happened. The trivia for Polis is huge. And it's like, this is where the Henry Stickman lore was found. More like Simpsons references. Um, Polis could be based off the movie The Thing. So there's a lot more interaction with this space in terms of intertextuality. And if there's potentially a narrative link between these existing stories and the one that is being told. While Mira is once again a little bit more um, sterile in the types of... Um, in the types of clues found, um, other than, again, Henry Stickman collection. Um, also, code is E-H-N-Z-I-F. Echnzif. <laughs> E-H-N-A-Z-F? No, 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 Z-I-F. Zif. Ech. Echnzif. Which one is the impasta? Love you is the imposter again. Cool. Interesting how both human players are not imposters. Yep. Um, so dropship situation that actually mimics the opening screen, right? Yep. Um, keys, I don't have keys. Interesting that there's actually keys. And then this is navigation, is it not? The one here? Uh, charting course. Yes, 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 yes. I'm just looking at the two close seats that seem to have something extra, whether it's a buckle or something else. It's hard to say. It is hard to say. It could just be the way the art is done. So clearly this is the ship. We get off the ship. The ship and this is looks like the one that was docked at Mira. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Though the front end of it may be a little different, but it's hard to say with the top cut out for us to walk around. Yeah, but this is definitely a good yeah. indicator as well. So we are outside, right? We're outside, on land, it's seemingly snowing. Mm -hmm. There are weird holes in the ground, yes. not just vents. This is the only one that doesn't have... Well, it does have vents as well, but it also has like holes for the imposters to go through. We're also parked on the edge of a cliff into what looks like other mountains potentially uh could be clouds could be mountains could be just a drop into descent into hell this reactor is weird because it's just like a reactor node so it's like is this or is it like sludge water like what are we right because the this is clearly set off from the cliff side right yeah, it's interesting because you can see the night sky if you go all the way to the top. Interesting. And then it's almost more like clouds, but they're stationary, and then gets into more solid land, and then to where we are. Yeah. It's hard to say. It is hard to say. Um, We've got our little toolbox. Mm -hmm. Lockers. Um, this actually looks like a proper building, right? And you have the door here. Yeah, we've got doors, we've got a nice area rug to track the snow off of your boots. Right. These doors I like much better than the other ones because you can actually open them. 
Yes. <laughs> Isn't this also the... Mm, I forgot to sabotage the other doors when we were in the other places. But I feel like all the doors function the same way, no? Yeah, they all close relatively the same way, though. These ones, I think, are the only ones you can open. Also, interestingly, electrical is outside, but only accessible from inside. Yeah. Although that reminds me of most places, right? Like, the electrical fence mm -hmm. is all around. Um, Otherwise, not a whole lot other than sparking electricity. Yes. This is interesting in that this... Um, it... It clearly is like a vent that was like removed, right? Because we have the missing, like the little metal bit from the vent part ripped up. So it looks like it's a under construction area. Bent out of place with awareness because there's stuff around it. So it's, it's almost like Polis was attacked first in such a way that people were able to kind of start operating against it by being like, oh, this is broken, be careful where everywhere else they already knew that something was happening, so they were more quick to respond and abandon ship. Yeah. No pun intended. Security as well. This security is interesting in that, like, on the Skeld, you actually see all the monitors at once. This one, you actually have to cycle through the different... Also, fun fact, if you stayed there... Mm -hmm. Well, I look down. The cameras... Yeah. Where is the camera? Where's a camera? You should be able to see me, no? Well, if I could remember where there's a camera. <laughs> um... I literally do not remember where the cameras are on this map. Is there a camera in admin area? I'm literally walking all the way across the map, ignoring everything. Just Oh, yeah, okay. So if you go to the one by the lava, which I think is southeast. Mmm, okay. Can you see me running around in circles? Here, let, let me check again. I w left the screen. Yes, I can see you running around. You can technically yeah, so see a murder happen if someone were to murder in this area. Yeah, and it's blinking red at me, so I can see that you're watching. Right, that's another indicator that someone is on cameras. Yes. Hmm. I come back after opening every single bloody door. <laughs> <laughs> Did you close them again? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Classic. Um, this O2 is weird in that it's the O2 that isn't... Like, the plant isn't contained in it. Like you're liter and you monitor the tree. It's the only O2 that you can actually interact with the plant life. Well, other than I guess on Mira, where you water some plants, but you're not act interacting with the device that's actually giving us oxygen. I'm assuming. Yeah, there's also a weird window into a corner here, which I find fascinating. Yeah, and the fact that this doesn't have a door or something, like it's just it's just random plant life. It's a giant tree with vines and wires just in a room. Yeah, and what a way to monitor a plant. Shove a fucking computer into it. Oh, mm -hmm. strange hole again that I'm not falling into. I can just hop over, apparently. Weird. Also, it, it's interesting that it's connected to the water system. Or no, uh, O2 canisters, and I actually get air from them. Yeah, this whole area is considered O2. It's only when you get down here that you get to the boiler room. And what's interesting is you collect canisters of oxygen, but you don't do anything with it. So it's like where, like, you know what I mean? Like, you would think this would be a twofold task, where it's like, collect the canisters and deposit them in an area, right? It's where, collect the fuel, deposit it into the engines. Mm-hmm. It's weird that you fill canisters and then just abandon them. You're just filling gas for your soda stream, you know? Like, that's what this reminds <laughs> me of. <laughs> uh, as well as her nice, wonderful water jugs. And... With some dripping water coming from a ceiling, assumedly. Also, uh, this is like crates, like a, a grate, so there's moving water underneath. Yeah, it's a very interesting boiler system when you literally have open boiling water below you. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's not just water moving. If it's the boiler room, assume like we're assuming the water is at boiling temperature, and then there's casually just this regular water here, like. 
Yeah, that's drinking water in case you get thirsty. Um, but yeah, it looks like it's actually bubbling down below, like it is boiling. They need to add the Among Us devs, please add a soda stream task where you need to get oxygen and some water. <laughs> you just You know it's not oxygen, it's carbon dioxide. Whatever, it's like the fizzy stuff <laughs> in the little cans. I mean not the cans, the canisters. Garbage. Garbage also looks filthy in front of it. Looks like no one has also little stains on the ground. Like so has this been abandoned for a while or not abandoned but just not well kept? Yeah, it looks like it hasn't been well maintained. Potentially some sort of moisture damage between the boiler room and the oxygen. Totally. High humidity or something. Totally. Also weird that the oxygen, even though the tree isn't in glass, I'm assuming this tube, since it connects to the room in here, is how the oxygen is being connected. Huh. How it's being gathered somehow. Yeah. Some sort of purification system that's drawing oxygen from this room. Totally. But yeah, people not managing janitorial staffs been let go in the times yeah, they of need to be fucking COVID fired. nineteen. Um, weather node, I don't ever under I I don't understand how these work at all, but they gather light signals, moisture on thing. I, I don't know. I it's a maze. <laughs> it's literally a maze. <laughs> um, let's go in here first. Again, who takes the lead? Um, left. The pizza has actually been bitten into. The others were just slices. Is this pizza? Or is it like a de decaying egg? Something on oh, toast? true. It could either... Or toast or something? Like... True, it kind of does look like a rotting, like, uh, what's it called? Sunny side up egg. Um, weird. But also, still the... The other rooms had drink boxes and this... This literally reminds me of, like, dr the drinking cups. Like, red drinking cups with straws in them. Or, like, cups from McDonald's. You know? Like, the... Like, fast food. Red Solo cup. Yeah. I fill you up. <laughs> um, server banks clearly at the top here. Standard monitors. Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot. Yeah, it's interesting that this one has a hole outside where they're the only ones that have a vent looks to be the broken one up by security. True. Also, come up here. There's a snowman, right? Snow among man. Snow among man. Which is interesting because we'll get to there eventually. I wonder if you can see it unless we're ghosts, but you can actually. I think Polis is the only map that you can actually float off the map as hmm. a ghost. Weapons is literally almost kind of like video game, like <laughs> yeah, and it almost looks like an engine of some kind powering the weapon. Oh yeah, some sort of energy beam. But what's interesting is like it connects to the thing outside here. So is this the weapon? That yeah, I would predict this is some sort of anti-air, anti-meteorite, I suppose, weapon. Yeah. Interesting. Then we come over to another weather node and a weird piping system that goes to nowhere. For water or for boiler system, like if you get that task. Um, yeah, it's just weird that it goes to seemingly nowhere inside the building. More snow among men here, among women, among non-binaries. Um, yeah. Weather node. Go through here. More stains. This is in this is when we get like I think Polis actually has the most environmental evidence. Um, cause look at these. You have I can't read what's on it, but you have the same trophy that was stored at Mira. We have two images clearly with text on them. One of which has been knocked and askew. I, and I can't tell what that is. This is clearly someone in a spacesuit, but the other image with the blue background. Yeah, it's like the one that we saw on Mira HQ by that one desk with Gamer Bro with all of his monster energy. Right. And then if we go to... We have a little water jug here, like office meeting room, a Keurig machine, three donuts, and coffee mugs. As well as water and some cookies over here. Yeah. 
and a projector. So if this is the, but it's interesting that it's called office. Would it not be meeting room or something, right? Where everyone gets coffee, sits at the table, looks at the updates for today or whatnot. That's true. Where it's not so much a working space as a meeting space, but that's still the best Do option. Unless this is also the office. Fussy? Yes. Okay. Um, I've got my wonderful boarding pass here. So do I. Where I always actually try to click and rotate rather than just clicking on the arrow. I know, same. <laughs> and then this would be card swipe if we had card swipe. Um, yeah. Just wait, what does that C say? See something say... See something say nothing, I think is what the poster says. Or see something say something. Oh, yeah, you're like right. Like reporting work accidents or something. And it's and it's and the say is crossed out, so it's almost like maybe they knew something wasn't right and started putting up posters, maybe like Hell in a Hydra. way to police things, and then the imposter came in and like graffitied the say. Very, very likely. Along with her vitals, with Sim Song. Yes. Y2K 404 2019 Y2K 404, Jesus. Y2K was an error, it never happened. <laughs> oh, goodness. Lava pit? Okay. End me. Where, Please. Where we're supposed to align the temperature. I I can't. The game won't let me. End me. Just, just fucking do it. Okay. Um, More snow people, some that. mountains. Okay, so you can't see the snow in pastas to the, um, unless you become a ghost outside of the map. Hmm. And one of them, it's like, it's three snowmen surrounded by a dead body snowman. I might, I might get, um, one of our alts to kill me so I can fly over there to show it off. Yeah. But we'll do that after we investigate the whole thing. Cause then you won't be able to see me as a ghost. Um, this is this always trips me up because I always want to walk through here, but I can't. Yeah, the fence. And what also that trips me up is that this is like the imposter hole, but you can't jump out of that big one. That gets me every time. <laughs> the other reactor, which is pretty much the same. I you might as well run into. Right. Oh, storage. Yeah. Interesting that there is that blood on the ground. We're here. Yeah. Or is it that... could be the looks like the kind of dirt that would be tracked in from outside here. Or is it just considering filling? Because this is where the fuel tanks are. So it could be. Yeah, gasoline. it could be. Rock from outside, either poking yeah. through the floor. Very dirty. Or brought in. Nice window that's been covered by a box. And what's interesting is that you can actually look out the windows, right? Like, otherwise you can't see anything outside the room, but you can see the windows. Hello? Can you look Hello? inside? See? You can only see... Hello? <laughs> Another poster. Same thing. Say something, say something. Or see something, say something. That you can't jump in here, but there's a knife on the ground? Like we have a or a trowel or something. Yeah. We've got shears and a hammer. A is that a hammer device. or is it a hatchet? Uh, it could be a hatchet or an ice pick or something. And then I, what Both is this one? Like stabilize the thingy is the task here. Yeah, stabilize the drill. So we're clearly drilling for something in Polis. Maybe we found what are the alien imposters. There was something buried deep beneath the ground and now we've let them free. But that's the thing that I want to argue, like, are they alien imposters? Because, like, there's multiple imposter screens you can get. Yeah. Actually, I'm curious. We might have to go back to Mira, and I want to see if it's only... If we get different imposter screens based off location. Or is it random? That's a good idea. Also, this looks like the weather thing, like, from the weather network or whatever. Yeah, it looks like pressure system patterns. We've got a crunched up map, I'm guessing, for drill locations potentially. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's interesting that while you have to raise the temperature of the lava, which is interesting that someone has a controlled lava pit, here is like the t lower the temperature thing. 
Mm hmm. I'm gonna come I, into have, the lab. I have telescope, which I hate this, uh, I hate this task. You just have to align it to a thing. Um, I'm assuming this is actually more so, like, all of them show evidence of research, but this one is the actual research station, right? Like, we have drilling, we're monitoring a tree, align the telescope, um, collect samples. One of them is thrown in the ground, which connotes sudden haste again. Or outburst of rage. That too. Me, like, circa grade 11 chemistry, when something didn't pull With up. Erlenmeyer flasks. <laughs> this time we've actually got like the lab next to medbay stuff. Which makes sense. There's also two medbays, eh? Or no, 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 On never mind. One? I always conflate Skeld, Skeld's med, med bay with this one here. <laughs> yeah. And this one we've actually got current curtain to make it private. And potential IV drips, although no IV drips are present. Mm hmm. A nice, uh, toilet that's been replaced with a hole for the imposter to jump in. Yes. Also, here's where things get interesting. Do you see anything behind the toilet doors? Mm. No, it just looks like hinges with a white floor behind it. Okay. So, the Among Us Twitter people, because they've recently become active on their Twitter, right? say that behind the second so the one in the middle the toilet if you look at the gap on the left side you can see a white among us crew member hiding okay i can kind of undersee where they're saying that yeah but it, just it, a matter of like size and proportion color it could be crouching, but I will say, if they didn't tell us that, I would have never fucking guessed that there was a crew member hiding in the washroom. Mm -hmm. Peeking out. I guess the only thing that makes it evident to me is that on this right one, on that left line, there isn't a break where there is on this one. Yeah. And what's interesting, too, is I wonder if the Among Us, now that the Among Us Twitter is active, if they're going to start doing the, like, FNAF thing, where it's, like... The eternal war between Scott Coffin versus Matt Pat, figuring out the narrative, and then Scott Coffin being like, mm -mm, "You only have like that." Yeah, it's a secret. You you'll never get it. And then, I wonder if that's what they're gonna start doing is feeding the narrative flow, where usually we have death of the author, right? Where once the author removes themselves from the work, the fans and community and audience essentially interacting with the text can make whatever fucking meaning they want from it. But now we're in a sticky situation in the 21st century where a lot of the authors are alive and they can comment on the text, right? And will comment on the text. Will, right? Like, it's like the classic example is even J.R. or, or sorry, um, J.K. Rowling being like, "Oh yeah, Dumbledore was gay," and it's like, why didn't you fucking write that into the, right? Like it's it's not it, you can make some connection, but it's never explicit. Also, the, there's clearly toilet water here from the blow-up, and uh, considering the little Among Us person here and the water coming out, are they um, scared peeing, or... See what I mean? Or... Are they hiding in the toilet, looking through the door? Yeah. Weird. Foot slipped and clogged things. But yeah, I wonder if now the Among Us uh, people are gonna start doing it, like, Scott Coffin style, you know? It'll be interesting to see how much... Well, I guess I'm gonna do. Come here. You. A little grate over the lava. Yes. Also interesting that you can kind of see like the a lava stream, and I'm assuming a lava uh, looks kind of like a waterfall. No. Like. Yeah, it's either a waterfall or like going into a cave, but I think it's more likely a waterfall. Yeah. We actually have specimens here. Like, these look like organic matter floating in tubes. Organic. Um, the the one in the middle kind of looks like an eyeball, but they all look like spines. Like, I mean, an eyeball hanging off of a string in a situation. Yeah, this one almost looks like a small brain. This almost looks like an octopus. I was going to say, that one looks like a hat. <laughs> hat, octopus, is there a difference? You should always wear octopi on your head. Um... Also interesting that, like, if you can look through the lights, you kind of get a great situation happening here. Um, and this is where you have to put, again, like, put the right shape in the right column, like... 
but... Yeah, storing the artifacts where there's a little skull amongst, like, a leaf and a crystal. And so I wonder, were those the artifacts collect studied at Mira, where you have to reconstruct the crystal? Are the tasks It could fine? be. It could be that they're related. I'm trying to think whether there's... Because there's a sorting, but it's a different kind of sorting in Mira. Yeah. And this is storing the artifacts. So it could be that it's meant to be like an artifact recovery mission. Right. Where things like the Skeld are like a mission ship that you'd take, come back to Mira, repair and identify, sort artifacts, and they come back to Polis to be stored. Also, it looks like we don't need to die. You can literally look through the wind, see the four Among Us snowmen around the dead Among Us. And it looks like they used a real bone instead of a carrot. <laughs> a carrot spine. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. You can actually see that without looking through the window. Yeah, yeah, true. More decontamination. Lots of books here as well. And you're right, there is, actually isn't a regular vent here. They're all like... Various books. Various books thrown here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. A nice DVD logo bouncing around. Also, I um, uh, love you, killed, hate you, and they it was a neck snapping. It wasn't an imposter screen. Well, I mean a, a, a like alien screen. Well, let's see what they do to me. Not myself, myself. How dare you? That was a stabbing in the back. It was a stabbing? Should we play again just to see if we get any other... Uh, death sure. screens? Sounds good. Okay. Because I'm curious, like, if if you get the alien ones, do you only get alien death screens? Or if you're the... Okay, love you is the imposter again. Okay. Gotta love our little alien friend on the keychain. Oh, is there- wait, right, we, maybe we should check out other tasks while we're here? Yeah, the... I have much the same, aside yeah, from same, Med Bay and Phil Canisters. Chart course. Which is interesting, you'd expect chart course to be in navigation, no? Is there a navigation on this one? I think- is there or is there- I, I always confuse Skeld with, um... Three foot six, weight ninety two pounds, color white, blood type AB negative. Oh, yeah, there is an alien on the key. It kind of looks similar to how the ghost looks when you're dead. Yeah, in a way, yeah. Murder me. I have I dare you. second, 27. So, any, anything else you're noticing other than my dead body? Love you keeps getting or like. Yeah, I'm not seeing much of significance around. But yeah, it's interesting that on. this one you're right. Like, say, was this facility attacked first? Because it, it shows the highest evidence of hastiness, right? Um. What'd you get? It looked like it was going to be a neck snap. A neck snap? Okay, I want to see what happens for if we can get to a, a what's it called an alien screen because so far we've only had human killings i mean like yeah. or what we perceive to be human right like other aliens could do specific things it's hate you by the way <laughs> so have we had is this the first time hate you's been no the second neither you or i have been the imposters Interesting. Okay, this one was a tongue stab. Like, open the mouth and the thing comes out. Oh no. So I'm Run curious away. what your death screen will be. Run away. <laughs> so yeah, weather node is... It literally has Mira on it. Oh, does it? Yeah, at the bottom it says Mira. Hello? Interesting. Hello, thank you. Also, as a ghost, I can, like, drift off the map. Kind of. I, I don't really see anything. I'm on the side of O2 and I'm literally, it's just rock. It's almost maybe as if it was built in a cave. 
because there's rock all the way around, it would explain the lava pit. Uh, hmm. Suddenly, we we're open area. Can't go too, too far. All I see is the snowmen. Um, then it's like open ground, open ground, open ground, open ground. Okay, it's definitely a waterfall, like a lava waterfall. Cliff, 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 and then off the cliff and some kind of abyss space situation. I see. What was your death screen? It happened so fast. <laughs> do you want me to do it again? <laughs> well, I can record it. Like, it's recorded, so I can play it back in slow, but I think it was alienish. Alienish? Interesting. No one has gone. Oh, you, you didn't rejoin. <laughs> Oop. I currently have a cat walking across my desk. <laughs> Just, you know, make sure your cat doesn't chew your Wi-Fi cable. My cat can't reach my Wi-Fi cable anymore. That was the smart thing to do. Who's the imposter? This time, You! I am the imposter. No! <laughs> <laughs> okay, you shot me. So it wasn't an alien screen. Also, it's kind of weird that we can complete tasks as ghosts. Mm-hmm. Just narratively, it doesn't make a lot of it sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It also doesn't make a lot of sense game mechanic-wise. Okay, let me know when you're gonna kill- I have a cooldown. I'm currently looking at the sabotage map. So we have the reactor, we have electrical, we have communications. Communications always seems like kind of a weak option to sabotage. It's also such a weird- sabotage in general like it's so difficult it's like you just have to spin all the knobs until you reach the correct signal yeah Zoria, i can't control three make three k <laughs> i'm not recording this one because you killed me <laughs> oh wait you can do it yeah yeah you just have to adjust the signal i guess yeah, I'm doing it by luck right now because I don't have game on you. Yeah, I don't either. There we go. It's All right, are you ready for murder? Yes. It was a neck snapping. So it looks like if you're going to have like perceived human kills, like you don't mix up the kills. You know what I mean? Because I was curious if would if you do like the alien imposter kill and then you shoot someone like if there are multiple kill styles and it just cycles through whichever kill screen you get yeah we'd need a larger population to test that fully but that seems at first glance to be the case yeah totally in conclusion what do we think the lore of among us is well, what we're kind of saying is that currently, with so little information um, and the amount of evidence that we've collected in our case studies, the lore is basically what you make of it. Just kidding, that would be fucking clickbait. <laughs> the most popular internet theories are either that of shape-shifting aliens have invaded the ship or parasitic aliens have invaded human bodies and are starting to corrupt them the latter only supported by the alien death screens. There is definitely evidence that points to some kind of hasty action, so potentially invaders. However, the words among us connote infiltration, methodological plotting, um, planning to strike when the time is right, or is this a war, crewmate against crewmate, among us since you were one of us? Or more likely Inner Sloth was just looking for a clever name to say there's an imposter. Find them. Facts. Regardless, evidence shows people hiding, dropping things last minute, consistent sabotage, creating anxiety in which crewmates are forced to execute their friends until they find the imposter. The killer is among them, and someone is lying. It starts on Polis, an isolated research outpost. The crew may have drilled into a nest of parasitic entities or infringed on shape-shifting aliens' land. The posters saying, see something, say something, with a knife-wielding crewmate indicate that there isn't a strictly new issue here. Being isolated, there was likely little concern for the threat to escalate, and certainly not to return to Mira HQ and the home world. However, given enough time, and potentially planning depending on the narrative you decide to follow, the imposters make their move. 
the holes where imposters can travel show less regard for trying to blend in with the crewmates, and the game world shows a more immediate panic. Items are broken and recently abandoned in an effort to get to safety, and once the crew has made it back aboard the Skeld believing themselves safe, only then do they have time to dwell on their actions. Aboard the Skeld, on the way back to presumably Mira HQ, the postures make a resurgence, this time making use of the ventilation systems. They are no longer in the numbers they were on Polis, and getting caught is even more dangerous game. Shutting down critical systems and picking the crew off one by one, it becomes even more important for the crew to find the imposters and remove them before the ship docks at Mira. It's unclear if the imposters will die in space, but they for sure have far fewer people to kill. On the way home, the crew is successful in getting a transmission to Mira HQ. The HQ is seemingly abandoned before the crew gets there, but it was already too late. The imposters must have been aboard other transports from Polis, and while the notice may have saved some lives, Mira has already been lost. The assault continues, and systematically the imposters appear to take control of Mira HQ, and the resources they control. But then again, why do you have to complete non-critical tasks like lab results to win? Understanding that these were interrupted midway through as, as environmental evidence in the game shows us through gameplay. Is life not more valuable? Is there some larger power with as much threat behind it forcing these things to be done before returning home? What if it wasn't a parasite or an alien species? From what we can assume, through details like the Mira branding on technology, Mira may be a corporation or something more akin to NASA, with the name making up an as of yet unknown acronym. Were they doing highly sensitive research that would require security and lots of jobs such as parking clerks, desk jockeys, and multidisciplinary research teams studying everything from uncovered artifacts to the weather? Did a lab experiment go wrong? Or was there a well-orchestrated assault on this organization or corporation by its rivals? The one thing we can say for sure is, we don't know. Maybe they dug too deep on Polis and found something they shouldn't have. Maybe we're digging too deep too. With the addition of the new map, you can be sure that we're not going to stop digging.